Liz Liz Carr has experience uh, uh, of it, an actor and comedian, but most importantly, an activist. Liz, thank you. down for me. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I, uh, I won't go on too much about the fact that I'm on a BBC TV show called Silent Witness. The only reason... No, I only bring that up because... You might as well have that one. Uh, for fuck's sake, there we go. Okay, right. Okay, we're fine. I only bring that up, not in the name of my own ego, but to go, we can't be silent witnesses. We actually have a moral responsibility to be activists and to give voice to those that don't have voice and to give visibility to those that don't have visibility. I'm a relatively privileged disabled person, but still, at the moment, I've just had a care assessment. I'm at risk of my benefits being cut, my care assessment that got me here today, that paid for the personal assistance to get me here today. That's happening to me. I can go to the press. I've got a profile. I'm white, I'm articulate, and I'm educated. I have privilege. And that's happening to me. My social worker sat for 15 minutes at the beginning of my assessment and told me about the cuts to the borough where I live. And I had to stop her and say, this is unlawful what you're doing. I know it is because I know my rights. But what if she goes to anybody else like that? And she does. She goes to other people's houses and she sits there and she says, you know, we've got to make amends. We haven't got enough money, so... That's before she's even looked at what people need. This is before she's even said anything else other than, oh, we've got a lot of cuts. How terrifying. How terrifying to older and ill and disabled people sitting there at home without the privilege that I have. So I can't be a silent witness as much as I love that job. I have to be vocal. And I join with Disabled People Against Cuts. I join with other groups of disabled people, but not just because of our issues, because this is hitting us all. Now, there's this sort of sense, and certain press would have it, that, you know, to be disabled today is, uh, what's it all about? Oh, it's all about blue badges and benefits and big loos, isn't it? That's, that's all it's about. It's a bit of a joke, really. No, and forgive me, because I am going to read when I was thinking about this. For many people, being disabled in austerity Britain means being hated. It means being stigmatised, demonised as burdens, drains on the state. It means being labelled as fraudsters and work shy. It's about being segregated and excluded and oppressed and discriminated against. It's about being forgotten and derided and abused and sanctioned and attacked and killed and cut and rationed and reduced, I'm going to go on, and starved and homeless and hungry and fearful and terrified and alone and isolated and abandoned and denied resources and silenced and rendered invisible and made to jump through hoops to prove your worth devalued, punished, subject to vicious attacks both by individuals and the state. It's about being inhuman. It's about being seen as useless eaters and the undeserving poor. That's the reality for disabled people in today's society. <laughs> and that's not just about being disabled. That's not just around us. We know that that's every other oppressed group and every other person who's struggling to survive in austerity Britain. Forget words like reform and review. Do you know what they mean? They mean let's ration. As soon as you hear ration, um, reviews and reform, it just equals rationing. That's what they're trying to do. That's what that social worker did to me and that's what she wants. Um, you know, we are told, and I've heard this before, that work will set us free. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> Sorry, but it needs to be said. Because to go to work, what do we do? Well, let's, let's cut benefits that people need by a third. Let's do that with the ESA cuts. Let's do that. And let's say that you do have a chance of getting into employment. That's employment where it's accessible or where employers actually aren't scared to employ you because they don't see you as disabled as lesser, which they do. So let's say there's no discrimination in employment and you actually get into employment. We then have cuts to access to work which is the support that allows us to do our job. So that's been cut. So if we do get a job and we do get the support, and that's quite unlikely, that's great. 
But do you have the social care to get you up in the morning or to pick you up from work or to cook you a hot meal to enable you to be in a state to do that job? Because that's being cut. And how about your transport? Because disability living allowance has been changed to personal independence plan and thousands and thousands of people have been miraculously cured. Hmm, funny that. Is that rationing? Yes, it fucking is, right? So lots of people now don't have their own cars. They don't have ways of getting from A to B. Getting your own cars on the mobility scheme isn't a luxury. It's the reality because most of the infrastructure in this, ca in this country is not accessible unless you're in the cities. And even if it is, people need bespoke transport because of their bespoke needs. Right, so now let's say we've got that job. We've got that social care. And that's a miracle if you get all that. You've got that transport. Did you get the education? Or did you have a segregated education that cared more about tossing beanbags and physio than doing the national curriculum and getting a decent education? And if you do get to higher education, what about the disability support grants, the disabled student support grants that have also been cut? I mean, I could go on. It's a miracle any of us get here. And I don't mean in any religious sense. I mean because of the barriers that we are facing. But of course, it is absolutely true to say that work will indeed set us free. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I will finish very soon. Um, but just to say, you know, I guess that I'm here today for all of those who have died waiting for benefits to be reinstated, for those who've been, been found fit to work actually months after they've died, for those who've taken their own lives because of fear of the pernicious brown envelope arriving through their letterbox, or the evil of the DWP, or the unending shame of being part of our welfare state, because that's what we've done. We've made it a thing of shame rather than a thing of support. We've made suicide a desirable alternative. Look, let's just cut out the middleman and legalise assisted suicide. Let's give the state even more power over our life and death. I just want to say, for me, I've been thinking about this a lot. We are all collateral damage in this ideological war that this government is waging. And this is a war, make no mistake of it. And the strongest weapon that we have in this room now is collectivism, solidarity and strength in numbers. This is not about pitting us against each other as we squabble over who is the hardest hit. This is the time for us to come together and to unite all of us who are hit and hurt by austerity. We are stronger together and we are all that we need in this room here and now. Thank you very much.